Home Show Garden Pros, helping to turn your thumb green. Well, hello. Good afternoon. This is Home Show Garden Pros, the uh, live video version. We got us a show here where we talk gardening. So, uh, you know, it's uh, linked to the awesome radio show, also named Home Show Garden Pros. And uh, we, we gather garden professionals, uh, these amazing co-op members we've got, and we combine our knowledge and make a super force for gardening. And uh, that may seem overblown to you, but it doesn't feel like it because we have all these incredible experts from these incredible retail garden shops. So places like Enchanted Forest and Enchanted um, Gardens out there bookending Richmond, Texas, up in Kingwood. You got Kingwood Garden Center and Warren Southern Gardens, two beautiful places up there. Just, you know, just great. Out in Katy, Nelson Nursery and Water Garden, awesome spot there. And then up 249, Northwest Houston, Plants for All Seasons. So you, you combine all that stuff and it's like, whoa, what gardening information. And of course, we added the amazing John Ferguson to that cooperation, that cooperation, co op, you know what I'm saying, um, from Nature's Way Resources up 245, just between Woodlands and Conroe, just east of, two four, of 45. Nature's Way <coughs> Resources has a beautiful new. Uh, garden center area so that's what we do uh on the radio show is we build a little uh super team of knowledge professionals and what we do here on the live version is we'd like to lift up groups that are gardening uh non that are out there working the gardening scene and uh you know of course we love having master gardeners on and that's that's where we lead into jonathan correa hey jonathan good afternoon how are you today doing well thank you for asking so, um, you know, we, our normal shtick uh, is that we talk about what the master gardeners are doing right now, answer a few gardening questions, go to a uh, throw out a video, and then answer some of the questions that we've got online. Um, and so what are the master gardeners up to right now? Well, um, our, our garden's down uh, on the southeast side of town, the Genoa Friendship Gardens on Genoa Red Bluff. Uh, took a pretty hard hit mm. over the freeze, but things are really coming back. Uh, the roses... Haven't looked that good in 15 years, some of the folks right. are saying. Uh, bamboos and gingers are coming back. The trial Ooh. gardens and the production gardens are looking fantastic. Uh, several plants that did survive through the freeze actually have come back nicely. Kale and shard that were just covered with a little, a little mm. frost cloth. Um, all the new tomatoes and peppers, they're doing wonderful. The herbs are, are just bounding out everywhere. Uh, and some of our new de demonstrations, like we're doing hops this year. Um, we're growing hops. They grow on a vine. I didn't know that. Um, but we do two trials this year. One is growing them, but then the second one will be drinking them. Oh, <laughs> nice. I like that. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that specific beverage. So um, that's so cool. And you guys, the, you mentioned trial gardens just there in passing, but y'all are really doing a lot of research and learning a ton. I mean, you know, not, not just on what survives freezes and what doesn't, but what can grow here generally. What will grow here best exactly from what i understand is that they do the same trial all around the state hmm. and they take all the results from it from seed to seed we start with you know a dozen seeds and they say grow it and then we start it in a little pod bump it up to a four inch put it in the ground every week our team is out there hmm. measuring describing um tasting if necessary harvesting and measuring how much it harvests and at the end of the year we send all this information back to a and m and they pound the numbers in, and at the end of the day, it comes out, okay, this is the best green bean to grow in Harris County. But it doesn't grow nice. in El Paso so well, but it's really good in Tarrant. Or okay. like right now, we're doing <laughs> petunias, you know? Uh, yeah. So that all comes in. That's awesome. Good news. That is so cool. And so if people want to participate in that, they want to become a master gardener, um, there's a lot of training that goes involved and service time, but it's really rewarding. It certainly is. If you'd like to help people learn how to garden and mm. you know, use relevant horticultural information. It's a great program. It's not just sitting in the garden, digging in the dirt. There's a lot of production. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of education that we bring to the folks. You know, the last year has been tough for all of us, uh, but we're coming out of it. And we have some new programs that we've learned while we've been away for a year um, that are really, really moving on and mm. we'll um, be able to, trying to think of the best word to say that the new things that were coming will really impress people and the new way we're providing the information has also been very well received through a and m and the AgriLife office here that is awesome that's such great news and you guys are doing good work so if people want to learn how honestly you just google becoming a texas master gardener and different programs in different counties so 
just do that. You know, d- your guys website is uh is you know is great too. I mean, people can just yeah. go there. You just go to Google and Harris County Master Gardeners will come right up. And we've got a good website that has lots of relevant information. Uh, our Facebook page, our Twitter page, our Instagram page all has good information that constantly is being updated. And uh, we'll, we'll still be doing it all the time. That is awesome. I mean, doing these, doing these kind of live version shows really just like resonates how many people are putting out great content. You know, like so all, all these amazing co-op members these garden pros we talk about garden clubs you know master gardeners master naturalist um our our space do it it's just like so many great people are pushing good content and i love it so much because gardening really more people i know a lot of new people are doing it and we're proud you're with us but like it's such a great and satisfying hobby so that's awesome so um i do have uh, some specific questions for you not just because you're a master gardener but because you're also a realtor right Yes, sir. Yes. And so we we sometimes get the question, uh, email or text or Facebook messages just about like, what steps do I need to take to, you know, I'm selling my house or what should I look for in a new house? Really on the, uh, pe- if people are thinking about selling their house, what's a good kind of bar to get to in the in the landscape? You, you want to know what your neighborhood is. If, you know, you, you're in a, a great neighborhood that has really, really good gardening front, you know, door practices, you're going to mm. have to keep up with that because you're keeping up with the Joneses. Right. Um, you don't want to spend so much where you over-personalize it, but you want it bright and clean and healthy. One of the biggest things I will see when I'm out looking at somebody that did a nice job on the landscape, but they didn't plug in the, 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 the sprinkler system, or they mm. don't have a sprinkler system and they never watered it, or right. <laughs> they buy something that really shouldn't be growing there. They, brought hy- they bought hydrangeas, but they're on the wrong side of the house. Uh, they're not getting any sun and too much water, so they all die and look terrible. Um, or when you can tell that they literally went last week and bought 100 one-gallon pots because they're still in the pots in the mulch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pay that little bit extra to have a professional do it because it will make a difference at the end of the day because you get that first few seconds to make your first introduction, and it's usually with that front walkway Yeah. with a, you know, a clean sidewalk, clean house, bright flowers, doesn't have to be knockout roses, doesn't have to be gardenias, or doesn't have to be, you know, any particular, it could be a whole bunch of different things. Or if you've yeah. been working on it over the years, you just kind of spruce it up. Um, and it's, 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 it's a good thing to bring to the neighborhood because people will remember, remember that house we saw, honey, the one with the nice bright, bright red roses or the daylilies? That was a real pretty house when we walked into it. Right, right. Like they may even call it the daylily house. You know, and that's how mm-hmm. they kind of like yeah. remember it, and it sticks in their brain that way. That's a that's a really interesting thing, and I, and I love what you mentioned about bright, like where it's not to me. It, for if it to be bright, it has to be pretty tidy, you know, not over complicated. So it's mm-hmm. like a, you know, tight, remember that? Yes, yeah, tight, bright, nice, clean lines. If you want to have a little kind of English cottage garden look, that's good, but you know, just just try not to make it too busy and too overwhelming because. What will happen is they won't remember you as the day daylily house. They'll remember you as that house with all that mess in the front yard. Right, I right. See the forest through the trees. Yeah, it's so okay. funny because if it's like it could be a lot of landscaping, but if it looks clean, people think it's easy, and if it looks messy, mm-hmm. people think it's a lot of work. So even though yeah. it's a lot of work both ways, <laughs> it's right. uh, it's a great thing. Well, cool. Well, what what are some other tips on that front? Um, make, make sure that, you know, your lawn looks healthy. That's, as re- that's really mm. important. If you have a pool or a backyard, uh, even if it's just very plain Jane, just keep it nice and neat and trimmed and edged, okay. uh, you know, spend a little bit more on a good fertilizer. That is a long, slow release one mm. that will hopefully last the whole duration that your house is on the market. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. That's a great thought. Yeah. You know, there are, you know, it's, it's that time of year where, it's start, going to start getting really hot, and our lawns can go from beautiful to ugly in about two weeks. <laughs> and you so don't true. want you know, a buyer to go, oh, what's wrong with this because of that? What happened here? Um, just keep it clean and simple. Maintain it. Don't overwater, but don't underwater. Um, that's one thing I do find out that some folks will do is if they don't water at all, they way overwater things, mm. and your stuff gets drowned. Well, and we will explore that later. Somebody. We'll explore that reality later on as we're answering questions. Well, thanks a ton. I don't have any houses that I'm about to put on the market or anything like that, but I just, uh, you know, I 
I need good answers to, and that's one of the ones that I'm always looking for. So thank you personally. You're welcome. All right, nice. We're going to start answering some of our questions. We we gathered these questions from our website, homeshowgardenpros.com. Uh, on there, there's there's a lot of interesting buttons. We have our whole kind of video library there, but two of the buttons I want to lift up are the Ask a Pro button, and that just sends an email to me, and I, I get you an answer. Sometimes we use it here on the show. Sometimes we read it on the radio show, so um, good content, too, there. Um, and then the other one is the Listen button. That is a great way just to click and listen to the show. It plays the last two shows on a loop, and so it's always relevant, good information that is uh, appropriate at this time. And good for kids. We don't cuss much on the show. Okay, we don't cuss at all. But you know what I mean. It's like a good for kids. All right, Jonathan, we're going to get into these questions. First question is from Jennifer. Thoughts on nematodes. So she just wants our thoughts on nematodes. Um, I feel like I'm seeing early signs of sod webworm moths. Would nematodes help? So, Jonathan, there you go. Um, it's a possibility. I haven't used them myself to control sod webworms. I'm lucky that I don't have a lot of sod. Um, I do know <laughs> that you first have to kind of figure out how bad the infestation is. You take about a six foot, but sorry, six foot, six inch by six inch square, and you, you dig it up a couple inches and you look to see how many of these sod webworms you mm. have. If you've got about six or more, yeah, you have an issue and need to get on it. Um, I think if you were to use beneficial nematodes, you need to do a little more research from somebody sorry whoops let me let me put that down <laughs> my bad no it's fine um that you'd want to do some good research on them to make sure that you're applying them correctly because you the good nematodes are great but you want to make sure you're using them correctly um you know does it interfere with any other other plant uh, just making sure you're, you're getting the right information and if the instructions that with it i always recommend read the instructions twice um right because I'm really, I, I need to read things twice when it comes to that, make sure I'm getting the, the correct one. I do know that, you know, AgriLife wants us always to say that if you have a certain uh, amount of a pest control, you probably should start thinking about, you know, a integrated pest management system or some kind of pesticide to knock it back quickly so that you can then go to a more holistic, I guess, you know, the, the, the nematodes would be approach to maintaining it. But yeah. the fact that she's getting on it early is very smart of her rather than waiting till July or August go, what's wrong with my lawn? Um, that's, that, that's always good to be proactive on something because little problems when you let them stay in the garden will become a much larger problem. Mm, very true. Very true. I mean, those direction things, you know, if you're reading directions too, you always want to read to the very end. That's a thing too. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, uh, something that's there. So read it to the end and read it twice. Nematodes are great. They can do a lot of things. There's a lot of different ones. And so wherever you're potentially buying them from, it should tell you what those nematodes eat because there's a lot of different types. And so that's one thing. I I love that you mentioned IPM, Integrated Pest Management. I feel like it's something we're always doing from building up the culture in the space to making sure we've got mulch. Um, you know, if, if we're trying to get deeper roots, that has to do with pest management and uh, herb pest management. And so to me, it's like something that you're always doing. You want to stay in that holistic top space if you can. But if you just be like, oh, we'll never have pests, that's when you get pests. So, yeah, um, it, I think we all strive to be pest, pesticide free. Yes, um, right. But every once in a while, there's going to be you, you go away for the weekend. Right. Um, you you're on vacation for a week. You got sick. You don't feel well for a few days. Mm. And it was 80 degrees and 100 percent humidity. And your cabbage has become infiltrated with every known bug in town yep and there's, you're like you don't know half of them <laughs> yeah and, and yet there's no amount of ladybugs or praying mantises that are going to help <laughs> right and, you know de's not going to help you just could either destroy everything or get out some seven or some other other stuff right. that will wipe them out but then you get back to a manageable approach and you know ipm is multi multi layers of yeah. controlling pests from not letting them in the yard Right. to giving them a hostile environment, which is means doesn't mean a pesticide. It means very healthy soil, very healthy soil. Your plants are healthy. They can help fight off bugs more naturally. Right. And by inviting the beneficials. Um, yeah. I can, I can remember going to a place on Washington a long time ago yeah, and someone getting like th three boxes of ladybugs. And I, I, you know, I said, wow, that's a lot of ladybugs. You must have a lot of pests. No, I don't have any pests. I let them out and they just they just eat everything and leave. And the guy behind the counter said, no, he has no pests because he's always using ladybugs, but they always leave because there's no food. 
Right, exactly. Exactly. And you <laughs> the know, the neighbors were benefiting from them. Yeah, somebody is over there. Or whatever, it's Ladybugs is loving life, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I think that's really why. I mean, planting some of the plants that invite ladybugs for mm -hmm. uh, in this example is something you can do on a regular basis. If you see a small aphid infestation, don't freak out. Try to get them to right. show up then. And then when you have that big one, you're ready to go. But you're absolutely right. Sometimes we gotta got to bring in our, our toolbox and our toolkit. And you know that saying, uh, when your hammer is your only tool, every problem's a nail. And it's like, okay, chainsaw is my only tool. You know, that's sort of like the pesticide front is like, we're going nuts with this thing. But um, yeah, so nematodes are great. At this point, at this stage in your lawn, if you think you're seeing sod webworms, they make a garlic barrier spray that just smells like garlic. Insects do not like the smell of it. And it's just a repellent. Maybe something like that. Molasses is sort of the same thing. Bugs don't like the smell of it. Spray it out there. Try to do maybe a little more repellent element to it. Um, and maybe that helps to just get them out of your lawn and uh, get them away, you know. So, and then if you're seeing them in your bushes, spray your bushes too. That garlic barrier stuff's pretty uh, pretty neutral for the plants. So, thorough answer there for Jennifer. She did ask us a pretty open-ended question, right? That first one, what do you think about nematodes <laughs> or something like? What about nematodes? <laughs> well, they're nice. They're worms. They're long. They're long, they're, but they're, they're tiny. Yeah, they're skinny little gross looking things under the microscope, but they, they have a very good important job when they when they do it right. That's right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We do have a quick question here from the um comment section. And so this is from Ken. Ken says bag or mulch grass clippings. So that's uh mulch. He's mowing the lawn, mulch. There you go. I like it. Yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> he gave you two options. So, you know, maybe if you've got a ton of high weed seeds, you bag it one time, but mulching it is so good for the soil. And that's what our, our mm -hmm. big focus is. Yeah, I was uh, talking to somebody about improving the soil. He's like, well, I mulch my grass clippings. And I was like, dude, that's just, you're just keeping it balanced, right? Those leaves, all that stuff in the leaves is coming up from the soil. And so by leaving the leaf clippings, you're just kind of like keeping everything the same. So, you know, if you really want to kick it up a notch, uh, grass clippings aren't going to do that. But if you're bagging them all and taking them away, man, I really hope you're adding a bunch of more good stuff back to the soil. Right. Anyway, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. Just like Forrest Gump. All right, here we go. Next question. This is from Steven. I'm eager to hear the answer for this one. Uh, I have a fig tree about five years old, and this year the leaves came out good at first, but now they're all wilting and dropping off. It happens on one branch, then moves to another. What is this from, and what can I do to fix it? Thanks. I mean, you know, obviously tough without experiencing it, but any thoughts are appreciated here. I would probably say my first question is when he says, um, now they are all wilting and dropping off. It happens from <laughs> one branch, then moves to another. That kind of concerns me. Sure. I would highly recommend him to get a couple of the leaves, put them in a Ziploc bag, mm. and contact AgriLife to see if they can get they can take a look at it um, because we used to be able to have people come in and drop off you know it's got to be kind of clean and sterile don't just come in with a, a branch um, you know, uh -huh. put it in a ziploc bag so the wave bugs it around don't run away um, and we have a bug guy that looks at him he's been really good I've brought in a, a few different mm. you know things he's like oh that's this this and this and you need to do that that and that um, right that's that's probably one of the because that way you will have a professional that knows whether it's you know, blight, a bug, or any kind of pest. Uh, my other answer would be that how, and again, kind of overwatering, underwatering. Mm. Um, this is been a rough year on people. I know everybody at first was saying, you know, do a, a, a deep drench on your trees to help them survive. Mm. Um, but remember that when the water is applied to the tree or the bush, it goes down to the roots and the roots drink it up. But it needs to dry out also so that when the water disappears, oxygen and nitrogen and other elements go down to the roots because the roots also breathe air like we do. And sometimes right. if you water a little too much, it's not getting oxygen and nitrogen. And nitrogen is very important for the, the leaves of a tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's also moving from branch to branch. That kind of concerns me. Well, a lot of uh, fungi, fungal diseases yeah. kind of do that right. same thing. Some of those some of those wilts or. You want yeah, to know we what it is before you go down to the store and go, I have a fungus. What do I need? Um, you know, it's, it's, you, you want to know you have the right remedy for it. Yeah, solution. You, you Absolutely. Want, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You don't want to 
apply things that will kill absolutely everything if we don't have to. So (laughs) I want to avoid that at all costs. I mean, having said that, putting down some compost as mulch will kind of help it. It'll balance Mm -hmm. that fungal bacteria relationship. Maybe you'll get some of the bacteria that eat those disease fungi. Um, The Monterey Complete Disease Control is awesome for that. But at the same time, you want you will always want to identify your problem. We get a lot of kind of gardener questions. What's this weed? What's this bug? What's happening here? That's really good to pursue that information. So, um, yeah, so that's the invitation to you, Stephen, is that maybe give us a couple pictures on that and we can uh, follow up there. So great question. We um, You mentioned uh, heavy watering, and so we're going to come in with Carlo's question. Carlos says, dollar weeds taking over my backyard, St. Augustine. Haven't been able to control them. Any recommendations? Uh, dollar weeds are <laughs> rough little bugs. Um, they're not bugs, they're plants. But well, the, yeah. I've, I, I know from personal experience, a very good friend of mine, he mowed his lawn every Saturday at 8.30 a.m. In the rain, in the winter, in the mm. summer, every morning, every Saturday at 8.30. And he always had it on four inches. Don't mow it shorter, don't mow it taller. And he had the most beautiful St. Augustine lawn I've ever seen. Hmm. It was trimmed and edged. It was just like a green carpet. Wow. And I said, how do you not have weeds and all that? Because I, I always mow it at four inches. I don't need to fertilize. I rake it every, out every once in a while, check the thatch. And he was just very simple with that. Um, I know down at our general friendship garden, we have dollar weeds. If they were a dollar, we wouldn't have a budget deficit. We would have so <laughs> many, much money. Um we don't want to do the weed and feed because we have a lot of swales and stuff that, you know, go into the bay and all we don't want to do with that. So we're trying to, you know, mow more often because that seems to help out a lot of mm. lawn problems, making sure the lawn is healthy. Um, if you do need to add a post emergent to it, make sure you're again, reading the instructions twice all the way to the end and mm. understanding how to apply this. Does it need to be applied to dry or does it need to be applied to wet? Do you water it afterwards? Do you not water it afterwards? Can the kids and dogs walk on it when it's dry or when it's wet? Um, and find out exactly what you want. I mean, do you want to literally get down there and start digging them up? You can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that because you'll be there all day. But, you know, a good, constant mowing does very well. Um, mm. Not allowing the – and the, the dollar weed is one of these ones that if you chop it up into 10 pieces, it multiplies in like a hydra or something. Um, <laughs> so you just have to kind of keep it clean, dig them up, remove them if you want to. But be consistent with your lawn care. Uh, and sometimes you just also, sometimes you just kind of have to look at it and go, well, that dollar weed's going to be there. Um, if, it's, if it's driving you crazy, you know, remove it. But if you think your neighbors are going to judge you on your lawn, I don't think they will. We, um, I, I believe that we tend to see dollar weed in two types of spaces, um, highly compacted spaces or overwatered spaces. And, you know, or sometimes the combination of those. And if you ever are one of those people that does get on down on your knees and try to dig it out, you'll notice their roots are very thin and very shallow. And so to me, that points to like potentially um, we can overcome it by opening up compaction. And I've seen this. I've seen this result. I mean, your your buddy, because he had that tall grass, probably didn't have compaction issues. And that let a lot of weeds go down and not be able to ever see the light of day. Right. And, you know, that's where when it comes to the dollar weed specifically, it's on the side of sidewalks a ton. It's on the low part by a curb. Um, and compacted spaces can be like little bitty bowls that hold some water in them. And that, you know, that very shallow, yeah. shallow uh, rooted weed um, does not like it when you have nice, lush, deep soil. So if that's something you can focus on, that's great. Have you used Agrilon much? That's what my kind of go to with dollar weed. Uh I have not used it in my lawn, but my neighbors are using it. Um, he's a real pro, so he always ta- asks me about his lawn, how to make it greener, and he's been using that in the. It's a uh, I can't remember I, Iron fa- Fate. Um, it's in a green bag, it has iron in it, something like that. I can't remember what the name is, um, but he's he's working on that. But I think that you know again, constant maintenance, really not constant, continual maintenance is is a very good yeah. thing to do for your lawn and. and getting down there to see it and you said like you you can dig it up it's not super hard but if you have a really bad infestation of it yeah it's going to take a while but mow it you know just care for the soil and if you got it in a bad spot that's a spot to really kind of then focus on to get rid of the conducive environment that's bringing dollar weed over there Mm, for sure 
Well, great, great thoughts there. And uh, yeah, Delaware is a real rascal. All right, back to the comments. Uh, Carlos says he's going to try to mow higher. He's going to go to four inches. He's got it at three inches. So, Carlo, four inches, buddy. Good. No, um, doing great. Uh, thanks for that. Three inches is a fine height for St. Augustine, but that a little bit higher can make a difference when it comes to competition. Another thing to do, Carlo, is try putting out some Humates Plus. It's a product that MicroLife makes, and it really does a great job opening up the soil just a tiny bit, but maybe just enough that your St. Augustine kind of takes up and just dominates. All right, Wendy has this question. So here you go, Jonathan. She says, my gardenia has that black coating on it. Uh, what can I use to remove it? So I'm guessing, she's, I guess she's talking about a tuxedo. Um, her gardenia has black on it. Yeah, but sooty mold, I'm betting. Yeah, I'm betting I'm it's sooty mold. The, 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 yeah, I get it on my, my citrus leaves a lot because I'm yes. on the highway. It's just, it's just, you just got to wipe it off. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to prevent it because it's in the air all the time. Unless if you, oh you know, sure, yeah, you, know, you. I don't think you can wash it off unless if you're out there every day. Gardenia hopefully is not as big as an orange tree, um, but you know, a nice light wash and insecticidal soap maybe would wash it off. And mm, yeah. If it, if and if you really really need to, I mean, uh, a, a little dish soap and water and a sponge and, and just wipe off each each leaf one by one, it'll it'll get done and if it it'll look certainly a lot prettier. But I don't know if really of any remedies or treatment well, to stop that yeah it sounds like you're caught kind of talking about just road grit and my mind went to sooty mold that glow that grows on honeydew from bugs like yeah, aphids and true. stuff like that's that true. yeah so that may be something she's dealing with too especially if she has it in kind of the opposite situation that you're talking about if she has it in a dense place by a house so maybe that insecticidal soap is a really great idea um for rinsing off those leaves but also putting some on there that those uh, insects aren't going to like at all so yeah. one thing, um, and I know that, you know, Master Gardeners and AgriLife does a lot of research on bricks rating, especially with grapes. Um, and it's something we'll have to explore with the hops experiment too. But um, the higher the plant, the higher the bricks of a plant, the less small pests like it. And that bricks is just kind of like a complexity content of sugar in the plant. Mm -hmm. And basically right. it's a health test. And so the only way to improve it this is what NASA says. The only way to improve it is by improving the soil. So a little bit of compost, Wendy, around yeah. those camellias might just save the day. I mean, gardenias, sorry. So get get just a bag of, you know, Nature's Way compost or a bag of uh, Landscaper's Pride and just put it around your gardenias, and that may be all you need to do. So kind of nice, kind of nice. Okay, yeah. back to the email questions. Question number three. This one's from Darren. Uh, these next two questions are from Darren. Uh, two different Darrens, so it's very exciting. We really, you can tell our audience is really attracting the Darrens. All right, here we go. Um, I am looking for ideas on an approximately eight foot hedge I would like to use to add privacy from a neighbor. Uh oh, from a neighbor. So specifically one, no, I'm just kidding. There, that area gets good sun. It has to be fairly narrow, as I have a pool that is right on a five foot easement. I would like to maintain a passage for lawnmower, et cetera. That also makes me think maybe he needs some small trees and not really a hedge. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's got he's to use that five-foot easement both for his walkway across the pool and mm -hmm. for um, the trees. He, so what are some... Yeah, uh, he's some yeah, he's looking for something tall and thin. So, you know, there's, there's a few that will grow fast. And, you know, if you get a... I always like a nice non-running but clumping bamboo if you can handle it keep it in a pot and bury it in that pot it will grow fast and furious and make a really nice hedge mm. um as the the blueberry japanese blueberry yeah yeah that's, that's a good easy one. to work with that i've seen you know especially a lot of new construction homes that's a very go-to thing these days and you can you can beat those things up pretty hard and they come right back i mean i've seen them make them into like christmas top finials and and, right you know squares and octagons and hexagons and they they keep growing <coughs> Excuse me. they do they do keep growing they may get a little taller than eight <laughs> feet if you're not careful yeah so i mean some other ones uh, you know easy to think of like arborvitae if you're looking for a narrow tallish one vitex. yeah uh, vitex yeah, vitex that's vitex a great one. one yeah you know um, jonathan that reminds me is a lot of times people they want privacy and they think they need a totally non-see-through wall 
uh, and maybe from this neighbor that he's talking about, he does. But generally, you just got to get something that distracts the eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even if it goes deciduous, those twigs will will stop people from noticing what's happening versus like, you'll still feel like you got privacy because you've got a distraction. Um, I always talk... That they, don't, yeah, that they don't know what you're you're putting on your hamburger, but they know you're out there having hamburgers. Yeah, exactly. But that's because the smell's so good. You know, the charcoal. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I'm a big fan of wax myrtles, especially poolside, because they also help with mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Anytime mm -hmm. anybody asks this question, we're always like, you got to check out Holly's. Yopon are pretty nice. Um, yeah. And that's one thing that also will keep, that you can keep pretty thin. So, And we we used to have a very nice long hedge of yellow double bloomed oleander. Mm. And it was a showstopper. You know, Absolutely. It, it wasn't an encore. It, it only bloomed from about maybe May till June. But it was a nice green, evergreen hedge all year long. Yeah. Um, I've cloned it a dozen times because I could never find a double bloom yellow like this. And we're put, putting a deck over there now. So we're trying to kill off the last bush. And it, it's not dying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. Um, it, so Darren was, needs to just come pick it up. Feet tall. Yeah. Wow. And it was very easy to, to, um, to trim around. Uh, it survived almost every freeze, even this freeze that the last one still still is coming back. Wow. I'm quite quite impressed with it. So yeah, that's a that's a nice alternative too. Well, we'll send Darren over to get it. He needs it. <laughs> okay, this next question is from Darren. Uh, here we go. Different spelling, which is always refreshing. Darren needs some help. He planted a cherry blast loripedalum. <laughs> and do not know why it's not doing well. He has a picture. It is doing terrible. Never had this problem. The plant faces west, a full evening sun. It looks like there's new growth, but then the previous growth is falling off. So we got a picture here, too. And uh, look at that. Not good. What's your uh, What's your first impression there, Jonathan? Uh, well, the poor thing. Now, I'd like to know, did you plant it before <laughs> the freeze or after the freeze? Because if yeah. you planted it before the freeze, it's probably just going to take a while to come back. Um, it was badly beaten up. If it's been there for a year or two, you know, years last fall, it may just be that it's having a hard spring. Or if you just planted it, is it being overwatered? What kind of mulch do you have there? It looks awful dark. Is it a good quality mulch? Um, or is it the spray paint mulch? Because um, <laughs> that, that may not be the best thing to feed your, your, your plants with. It may look pretty. Um, but you know it's got a lot of chemicals in it. I, I'm not, my opinion. I'm not. I don't have facts on that. But I would think spray paint or paint is not. I don't think it's food-based coloring. Sure, sure. It's not the same stuff they're putting in cakes. Um, you know, yeah. I have seen also the wood that they make dyed mulch out of because that fresh kind of woody stems and leaves don't take a dye very well, and no, so they're they gen generally using dried lumber pieces like the stuff that you would make cabinets out of, or even a you know pre-treated. It's not generally treated lumber, but it's just heartwood. It's not very nutrient-rich yeah. lumber. And so not only do you have a chemical treatment on top of this nutrient, um, you know, lacking lumber, you, you, have, uh, you have both problems at the same time. So that, that often leads to a lack of resilience in plants. And so your loripetalum is a slow-growing plant, and this is a dwarf variety. So, Jonathan, I think you're yeah. absolutely right. Like, it takes a while to grow back from the freeze for something that grows really slowly— yeah. But then with and, that mulch, it might be a whole other yeah, layer. But I do see a little drip irrigation, which is okay. I like that. How nice often spot. Do you That's a nice it. spot. Wow. But right down by the roots, the where the trunk kind of goes down to the ground, how mm -hmm. low is that to the ground? Um, is it below grade or is it just above grade? Because it really should be just above grade. My hands are going everywhere. Um, so <laughs> that it, 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 it drains off uh, and it gets air to its roots. Right. So, no, good call. Well, and you were also mentioning that that drip irrigation sometimes, you know, homeowners don't know how to calibrate it. They don't know how to check it. Um, you know, we're not, they don't know what the flow is on it. And so there could be very, very severely overwatering or very severely underwatering um, with that or, stuff. So, in, in, in my instance, on mine, um, I, I unplugged it during the freeze, mm. drained the water. I didn't take the batteries out. <laughs> so when I plugged it back in, it was like r ridiculous. It was watering for an hour and a half one day and then not for like three days. I'm like, what happened here? I had to take the batteries out, let it sit, put new batteries in and reprogram the whole thing. Oh, wow. So you do have to, even even though you set it and forget it, you still need to check it every week or so to make sure that it is 
working right. Um, cause I was wondering why I was getting this puddle at the end of my, my gardens. Well, it's cause it was watering for an hour and a half once a week rather than 10, 15 minutes every day. Well, very few things can you actually set and forget, you know, but when it comes to gardening, you know, we're not really looking to forget. We're looking to embrace, to enjoy. Right. So, um, big step for me, um, seems like checking that watering on that lower pedalum is good. I'm putting something down like, um, micro live seaweed or even some, uh, gardener's magic from landscapers pride, something that's got a lot of, uh, fertilizer set up, nutritional boost to it. Uh, super seaweed does a great job of kind of getting down deep, getting to the roots and, uh, kind of helping provide it. But from now on, um, there's black velvet from, Na- from landscapers pride. You can use dark, you know, fresh mulch from nature's way resources. Uh, those are two really dark kind of mulch substitutes that are actually going to help your plants out, um, versus dealing with like this, you know, crisis where every bit of threat, all the plants resiliency is just gone. Um, and that's my assumption on what's happening. And Jonathan, you know what happens when you assume, you know, you take the information you've got and you make a guess based on that mm-hmm. information. Yeah. That's literally what you do when you assume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's the other thing, but we said I, we weren't going to cuss. Want to go there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. We said we weren't going to cuss. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, great job so far. Again, if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments. We're happy to get to them. We have a great little video segment here with Joey Linderman from Enchanted Gardens. And so we're going to go to that talking peppers. Here you go, Joey. Here we've got some of our most popular peppers, and now it's pepper season. So there's things like sweet banana, which is a good snacking pepper. There's the famous jalapenos, of course, for salsa and adding spice to your food. And everybody loves bell peppers. The Big Bertha and the Red Beauty are two of the most popular. Great thoughts there by uh, Joey. Um, Any further kind of tips for peppers, Jonathan? Uh, Well, it is starting to be their, their season. They like it warm. They like it fertile, um, water them from the ground. Don't spray them with water mm. and make sure they've got lots of airflow and you'll get some really good peppers. I've got a few different varieties this year that I'm trying some, I don't know why I go back every year. I think I, I can handle it, but then I always want to do another hotter variety. I've got a Bulgarian sure. carrot and, uh, <laughs> some other, I don't know, some just, it has like three X's on it. Yeah. <laughs> is Bulgarian food spicy? Is that like a, I don't think I've ever had it. Is I it? don't know, but it's, um, <laughs> it's a pretty looking pepper on the, on the, on the photo. So. Right. We'll that find is awesome. out probably in a couple months. You know, I, um, the medium peppers, serrano, jalapeno, anchos, they like make so many and I can eat them. It's like hard for me to really get behind like something that's going to, uh, burn my face off but you know hey you guys go yeah. for it i know a lot of people love those super hot ones and they're they always seem... fun to have available for a friend or so oh yeah yeah you you go on and you grab you grab your jalapeno you eat it like oh that's hot hey you want to try this one sure <laughs> sucker <laughs> well i i uh did grow jalapenos a couple i mean in habaneros a couple times and it seemed to be the prettiest plant in the garden it was like very well shaped and man talk about mm-hmm. a pretty and shiny pepper just a gorgeous little yeah situation um do you feel like there's any additional tips that go with bell peppers um versus kind of on top of what you just said just you know they like a lot of sunshine especially morning sun Hmm. so they can dry out overnight with our humidity um you know a really good slow release fertilizer and very good deep rich compost okay Um, i find them and tomatoes to be probably the two heaviest feeders um and that's why i kind of and you you got to make sure you rotate them out don't grow peppers or potatoes and tomatoes and eggplant in the same spot every year, rotate them in and out, put a cover crop in after them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I just think that, you know, if you get a good plant to start with from, you know, a nice local nursery or somebody right. that grow them by, by themselves, rather than having something you know, shipped in, you know, from a thousand miles away from here. Right. Um, you know, one of the things I've, I've, I've noticed a lot as a master gardener with fruit trees and a few other things is, they they want to sell me a a blank peach tree in Houston. I'm like, that needs 700 chill hours. Yeah, that's not going to grow here. Um, or certain vegetables that just that it's just too warm here for them. Even though they right. like warm weather, it's just too warm and too humid. Um, you know, like I've never been successful growing squash in my yard. I don't know why. Mm. I don't have the bugs. I've raised up the you know, put, put four feet in the air and big huge <laughs> containers and sure. And they 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 make the flower. And then they die. 
<laughs> That's so. great. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny you said that because I I had great success one year with those tromboncino. That's really long Italian squash. Mm. They call them like trumpet squash because they're like they look like a big horn. And so that one year convinced me I was good at squash. And you know, I've had to mix results ever since then. But you know, I know I'm good at squash because I did tromboncino one time. So <laughs> if you need any advice about squash, you should let me know. It'll be exactly you what you're already doing. So. Squash man. Yeah, squash, hey, squash man. That's this guy's name. Uh, I do like the name of the squash bugs though, because it's a it's a type of bug and instructions. So mm -hmm. always good stuff. Good dad joke there to end it all. Well, thanks so much, Jonathan, for being here with us. Um, you do a great job answering questions. Thank you. And again, you know, let people know how to figure out more about uh, Harris County Master Gardeners. And we're available all the time. So come by and see us. And I love that you have the great gardens, and people can call with a question. Which is so cool, so rare. Obviously, we've, if it's we've, uh, they've, oh, they've, they've 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 pivoted on that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we have a new Ask a Master Gardener questionnaire that you can do online. Okay. Uh, you can you can add video, you can add pictures, um, and they get back to you within twenty four to forty eight hours, depending on the question. Um, oh, they want nice. to make sure that we're giving more accurate, more relevant information. Mm, right. One of the things we found over over the pandemic was. Sometimes at the phone room, you know, someone would call in and say, hey, Jonathan, what do you know about this? Well, then they call back next week and they go, hey, Doris, what do you think about this? And they get two totally different. <laughs> um, well, so we're trying uh, to one, 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 one stream of information. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, if you do want to get your question answered via phone, call into Home Show Garden Pros. That's what we do. Saturday, 7 to 9 a.m. on Sports Radio 610. We have a lot of fun, and uh, we'll say the number a lot during the show. So your job is just to tune in. Uh, Saturday morning, Home Show Garden Pros. We love all we do. Big thanks to Jonathan. Great job again, as always. And um, you guys look him up if you need a good realtor. Y'all have a great day.